What's up everybody? Derek here, working on my Raptor Gen 1 2012. Today we're going to be replacing the door handle and the keypad. Um, I bought this truck in like September or August and the keypad has not worked since I got it. The uh, buttons, uh, definitely this one, the 9 and 0 button, just barely comes on in the middle of the night. So I'm thinking it's just the keypad's bad. So I'm gonna walk you through how to change it. So the first thing we have to do to get to the door handle is take off our door panel. It's pretty easy to do. There's a little cover in there we gotta pick out. There's a cover behind here we have to take out. Um, there's a bolt here, there's a bolt down in there. And then there's two bolts down on the bottom. There's one here. And there's another one right there. I believe they're all eight millimeter. I will definitely put in the comments exactly what size they are. But uh, to start, we're just gonna get this cover up. Use my little flat head here. So in order to get this first little cover off, just take your flat head screwdriver, pry it underneath here and pop it up. It does take a little bit of force, so. Then to get this one out, I'm gonna use this hook pick tool. Pull back on the handle, and if you look deep down inside there, just kind of put your pick behind the black piece and pull it back. Uh, again, just a little bit of force and it'll pop right out of there. But there you can see one bolt, two bolts, and then the two on the bottom that I pointed out. Okay, I'm just gonna zip these bolts out quick. They are all eight millimeters. I take that back, they're not all eight millimeters. The two on the bottom are actually a six millimeter. But once you get all four of those out, you just pull up on this. Next thing we have to do is disconnect this cable for the door, which I'll have to get a pliers for, but if you look at the if you look at it, you just pinch in on the sides on this. And then it should slide out towards the door this this way. And then our electrical connectors. There's a few going to your Window switches. And then one up here. Yeah, so like I said, guys, you just, I took a little needle nose, pinched in on these two sides, and then pulled this way on it, and then it slide right out. Just move the cable forward. There's a little slot on the top there, and Pull this straight up, and then you can lift your door panel out. And with most, or just like any electrical connector, all you gotta do is reach under there, push down on this little tab, and pull down on it. So the next thing we have to do is remove our dust shield here just enough to get to this corner these actually help keep a little bit of the sound out as well ok 
Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is take this bolt out right here, or sorry, nut. And then on this bottom hole, we gotta take this one out right here. And then we actually have to take this cover off. And there's a bolt right there we have to undo. So it looks like they are 10 millimeter. So I'm gonna grab that and come back. So before we unbolt it, we do have to do one other thing. And that is disconnect the door from the mechanisms that kind of control it all. I had a time getting in there so you could see, but that little thing right there there we go this bar goes up to the handle and it attaches to other things as well use your little hook tool get in behind it and just pull back towards you and it'll unclip like that And then just pull the bar out. Now the only thing holding it on is the nuts. Sorry, that was a really bad shot, but I did my best. So again, this one right here. And that one on the top there. And then, oops, and then the one we opened up over here. And as you can see, the handle's loose. Should pull out. Also, don't forget to undo your connector for the keypad. It's this green one right there. And there's a little push pin here. Which I just grab with the pliers and push it in. Keeps it from breaking. There's one more bar we need to undo. And it's this one right here. Holds the lock cylinder in. So actually all I did was I pulled this, it was right there, just pulled that out, and then the lock cylinder is free. Now we just figure out what we're catching on here. Another clip for the harness, if you can Well, there you go, guys. I got it out. Uh, this little pin right here is what was holding it in there. I just got in behind it, pried it off, popped right out. So you can see, I like to make sure everything looks the same before we replace stuff. Connectors look the same. Um, there's no lock cylinder in the new one, which is fine. So we took the old one out, obviously. We got to take this little clip off. Took the clip off just like the other one. And <clears throat> so we can slide the new, or the lock cylinder back in. And then it looks like the only other thing that's missing on the new one is this bar. Uh, this is pretty easy to pop out. Just kind of follow the hook on the end there. 
comes out like that. This one, put the little orange plug in. So yeah, we just take this, hook it in here. Twist it around. There you go. Now the new one's ready to go back in. Insulation's just reverse of removal. Pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, I'm gonna toss it back in there, show you guys a couple of connections we gotta do, and we'll see if it works. All right guys, I got it all hooked back up. A uh, little tip to give you is Actually, take the lock cylinder out of the truck and that little bar. Put the lock cylinder in your handle. And then after you get the handle in all the way, just hook that bar up. It just kind of slides in and then hooks up into that uh, fingered piece that you could see there. Um, just take your time. Be, I mean, be careful with it. It's pretty self-explanatory. You'll see where everything goes. Um, like I said, I got it all hooked up. Next thing I'm gonna do is just set my door panel up here and test everything to make sure it works before I completely install my door panel. Nothing worse than thinking you're done with the job, getting it all back together, only to find out that it's not working correctly. So just kind of press this back up there. If you live in a warmer climate or it's warmer where you are right now that sticky stuff will hold a little better than it is here it's about 30 degrees in Iowa today but if you see on the bottom of your door panel there's hooks and then there's little hooks down here that it slides into so just kind of set it on those and let it hang out for a second We're going to plug all of our connectors back in. Once our connectors are in, we're going to rehook our door handle, door, sorry, door handle, which you just take that little barrel in, just opposite of the way we put it or took it off. You slide the barrel end in, pull back on this wire, and then push it into the bracket and it'll click so there everything's hooked up and then I just flip my key on make sure the windows work locks and unlocks work watch that bar down and up our mirror switch that's working and then just kind of give the handle pull feels good the other one feels good so I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up the rest of the way and uh, then we'll test it and see if my keypad's working. All right, guys, I got everything back together. I left the little caps off just in case, but I did bolt everything down, tighten it up, shut the door, and make sure it opens with the handle on the outside. We're gonna make sure it opens with the handle on the inside. Try to lock it and unlock it. Perfect. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Okay. Well, I think that unlocked it. Let me lock it and try it again. Hey, hey, awesome. I miss my Jeep. It had a keyless entry and um, push button start. It was nice to just keep my keys in my pocket all the time. Uh, 
getting a little sick of having to take them out. So figure something out where I don't have to do that every time. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope this doesn't uh, scare you. Seems like a pretty easy job you can tackle on your own. Uh, I'll put the part number. This is an OEM Ford handle. Uh, something like that I'm not going to mess around with aftermarket. It just, it'll end up not working. Um, but I'll put the part number. I'll put the tools I used. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please don't be scared to ask. Um, be more content coming your way here soon. I had a project that took me about two months and it was an absolute nightmare. I should have recorded it, brought you guys along for the ride, but it was such a pain. I don't, I don't know if I could have done both, but next time I'll definitely bring you guys along. Not everything goes as smoothly as this. Uh, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. Really appreciate all you guys coming along and watching us do stuff. If we've helped you out with anything at all, please let us know. Um, we'd love to hear that you were able to fix something on your own because Antoine and I helped you out. So have a blessed day, everybody. Hope you take a minute out of your day to do some maintenance.